Hello everybody, this is your friendly neighbor Lisa Foxy and uh, again with the warning on here for viewers is discuss viewers be advised <laughs> there sorry great way to start my intro all just like this anyway so uh, yeah so remember this game uh, it is called you and him so uh, yeah also I just realized I thought the sound was gonna work but it's now on my headphones, so hold on, let me... Or not my headphones, but my uh, TV here. Hold on. There we go. So, I'm going to continue on back here in this episode because I wanted to finish it. The story. Uh, let's see how long this demo... If it is a demo, or maybe it's actually the full game. I, I have no idea at this point. I cannot remember. But all I do know is I hope you guys enjoy this. And, uh, yeah. But, uh, let me go ahead and load. I think we had, like, some options here. Oh, right. Because I was either biting the hand or go limp. Actually, I'm quite curious of what happened if we go limp. You allow your body to slump, catching your assailant off guard. They stumbled as your body weight pulls them forward, and you manage to twist and spin out of their grasp. They manage to catch themselves mid-fall. You squint in the darkness and recognize the silhouette. The feminine, feminine and definitely not Adam. The voice is distinctively female. Aunt Ruth? What the hell is that for? Yep. It's your aunt, all right. I thought you were someone else. Who else would I be? No one else lives here, you stupid brat. She turns... She turns and you hear the bolt lock into place and followed by a rapid succession of four more clicks soon after. Okay, well, at least nothing really changes. So that's actually a good thing. So... If I'm not mistaken, I needed to go back. To, I believe, this? Okay. Because the last time we were here, it was because that he was on TV. And she forgot something. Okay. Adam enters Rayer's bar and grill with the slumped shoulder and the aura of a man who just lost everything. He pulls his baseball cap down to shield his eyes as he takes a seat at the bar before waving the bartender over. What can I get you? Adam makes sure his voice cracks a little around the edges as he answers. Bar bud, on the rocks please. He lets out a pathetic sniff while the bartim bartender pulls out a glass. He works with uh, practiced efficiency, but Adam can sense the man growing curiosity and concern over his behavior by certain clues in his body language. Like the way the bartender chews on his lip as if he's debating on asking if Adam's all right. Or the way he places Adam's drink of choice in front of him, soft and polite. If he's afraid of uh, startling a, uh, a deer. He's a natural empath and one that can easily be exploit for information. Perfect. Is there anything else I can get you? Adam solemnly shakes his head. No, I'm fine. Thank you, though. He keeps his voice soft and quiet. 
as he rubs away constations off his lips on the lips of the glass. He forces his, himself to keep a straight face as the man shifts from foot to foot. It's almost too easy. Then as predicted. Hey, are you okay, man? Adam swallows thickly as he can feel the man growing more and more worried. He's got his attention. This is perfect. Just got a lot going on. I'm sorry. He sighs and pushes away the drink. I don't even feel like drinking this. I just a mess right now. The man hesitates, but puts Adam's bourbon off to the side and braces his crossed arms against the countertop as he leans forward. Adam scrubs a hand down his face to hide his smirk. He really should try out acting one of these days. He's too good at it. After he finds you a slit, your uh, after he finds you and puts your pretty little throat, you'll bring up the idea of saffron. Idea to saffron. Knowing saffron and his desires for the band to reach Gardener's height, you're almost certain he'll fig he'll agree. But first things first, he needs to weasel some information out of this guy. We could talk about it if you want. I'll listen. Adam shakes his head, face still covered. It's hard not to laugh. Why are these people so easy? He clears his throat of laughter, although the bartender will think otherwise. I don't want to bother you. I've already done enough today. No, it's okay. Well, what bartenders are here for, yeah? He's so sweet and sincere, Adam could puke. But instead, Adam just lowers his hand and lets out a deep, shuddered breath. It's silly, but I've gotten into a, f a fight with my significant other. It started off a light argument. They were frustrated over something I said, and I responded negatively because I didn't think it was that bad. Adam sniffed again. Then it spiraled from there and they ran out of the house. I spent hours looking for them, but I don't know where they ran off to. And they won't answer their phone. I'm so scared they, they got hurt. Bartender grows solemn. Well, maybe I can keep an eye out and tell them you were looking for them. What do they look like? Adam whips out his phone and shows him a picture of you. It's the one he grabbed <coughs> off your social media and saved for this exact purpose, photoshopping the two of you together in order to feed into his story. The bartender takes Adam's phone and scratches the back of his head. Oh yeah, actually, they were here a couple hours ago. Adam perks up. Really? They're okay, they're not hurt? The man gives Adam his phone back. No, they seem a bit jittery and left with their wallet behind. He pats the back of his pocket for emphasis. I picked it up and tried calling after them, but they seemed like they were in a hurry. I'm keeping it on hand in case they come back looking for it. Adam looks down at your photo with fake fondness. I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Maybe they're still near here. Sorry I couldn't help more. Adam allows a fake few tears to slip from his eyes as he rubs them away with his thumb and forefinger. As if on cue, the bartender round the count round the counter and soothes Adam with a comfort pat to the back. A warm comfort presence to some, but to Adam it's annoying. Pathetic. Still, he given him a perfectly opportunity. What kind of man would Adam be if he didn't take it? He stands up and hugs the bartender, who stiffens in surprise at this sudden gesture. 
Adam gives the man a hard squeeze around the shoulder, playing up his gratefulness in order to distract him from where his other hand travels. His fingertips brush the tip of your wallet without hesitation. He slips it out into his own back pocket. This happens with it within a matter of seconds. The bartender didn't even notice, nor does anyone else. He got what he wanted, plus more. Now it's time for him to leave before he overly stays his welcome. He withdraws a decent-sized tip, placed it on the counter. Thank you again, really. Before the bartender can even respond, his eyes going wide at the amount of money Adam's already out the door and headed back to his car. He inspects your wallet a few minutes later, away from prying eyes at the rest stop. Adam smirks to himself as he draws it out with relish. Who would have known you would have been this careless? For someone who evaded him so long, you keep making mistake after mistake. It's really sad. He hums to himself, tapping the corner of your wallet to his lips while grinning. Damn. He wishes he could see the expression on your face when he returns to the bar to find how someone was looking for you. You're smart enough to draw your own conclusion from his trail of breadcrumbs. He licks his lips, delighted at the pleasurable thought of you trembling in fear like a lost little lamb concerned by the big nasty wolf when a bartender tells you. Will you die on the spot right then and there? Or will you wait for him to show his face first before succumbing to realization that he's inescapable? He hopes it's the latter. Adam can't wait for the chance to finally break you, but he needs to find you in order to do so. He looks back down at your wallet, traces the fox black leather with his thumb, noticing the worn inside and distant smell of you. It's almost too much, the way you hold his scents with your coy log sweet scent. So he breathes through his mouth and focus on sorting instead. Adam gets a sense of who you are as he rifles through your rewards cards, studies your driver's license, and count each coin down to the last penny. He glands superficial facts about you, things easy to spot even without your wallet, but and put them aside for the rainy day. Next are your crumble up receipts. <clears throat> he scours through them. Sorry about that for the silence, guys. He scours through them, and they range from small purchase too much larger grocery runs none of them are relevant he glosses through each of them with learn efficiency until he lands on the last one it belongs to the gas station that's quite out of the way from your residential area the date is from yesterday early in the morning and quite a few hours before he pulled over and helped him, pulled over to help him, thinking he was a hitchhiker. He doesn't know why you drove down that desperate highway. I mean, distorted highway, sorry. And he never needed to ask why people did the things they did before he killed them, because they never escaped. Not until you. But these are the most important questions, because they're possibly a clue to where you're hiding. For what reason did you go into the outskirts of Park then? And why do you and why do you so before making what he assumed was a long trip? He searches the other receipts for possible answers, but there is none. 
Adam leans back in the seat, pondering over loose theories, none of which holds any merit. Then it hits him. You were visiting someone. Maybe a friend, or a relative, or a lover. It doesn't matter why you visit them, but possibility that you did, as well as possibility that you were hiding out at their place, could lead him back to you. It would explain the lack of receipts. And there's no other reasons for you to visit any groceries which sit in the blistering hot car for hours. He doubts you visit a restaurant. Well, you visit someone. But who? That's a question he can't solve on his own. Not without help. He flips open his phone and calls Saffron. I need you to do something for me. Back to me. You sit outside in your uh, idle car, idling car, while beating yourself up for a solid ten minutes. <laughs> Mistakes were made. One piled on top of the top of another, crushing you under their weight. <coughs> the biggest, the biggest being, the fact that you agreed to drop off those stupid guns. You should have played sick or let your phone drift to voicemail. Because when your family calls, it's never for anything good. You want to bang your head against the dashboard until you pass out. Of course, you left your wallet because, of course, everything that can go wrong will. You're so tired of this. Of the games, of hiding, panicking, of not knowing what to do. Adam should be the one who's afraid not you. Not when he's the one who has everything left to lose while you have nothing. But he's after your life. And while it's at terrible at times, you're kind of attached to it. Going out once for the grocery run wouldn't be so bad if you could just order future stuff online. But losing your license and debt card means you'll have to wait. And the last time you tried replacing your debt card, it got lost in the mail. And you were forced to wait two extra weeks. The delivery service sucks here. So more than likely, it's going to happen a second time around, which leaves you with two options. Either go back to the bar, risk running into Mr. Relentless, but minimize the need to go outside as frequently. Or, hope the delivery guy don't fail you and risk going out to get groceries for the next few weeks. Neither option is great, but going to have to go to the bar makes for the big risk, while the other makes for multiple. The choice is obvious. You have to return to the bar. You look at the cash her aunt handed to you, wishing she used a debit card instead. But the woman refused to expose herself to online feds and work under the table. Everything comes either in crisp dollar bills or nothing at all. She's always errors on the side of caution. But, in all honesty, maybe you should take a few notes from her book. Especially with Adam on your trail. But you at least have something you didn't... You didn't last time. A sharp kitchen knife glints in the passenger seat. Sure, it's grimy, but at least it can defend yourself rather than being defenseless. You mentally prepare yourself on the drive over. There's no telling if you'll have to use it. Aunt Ruth. Ruth stands beside her bed, looking down at the old photographs from before she ever got married. The one where she's in front of her old church the day after her high school graduation. 
Here, she's younger. Prettier. Hopeful for the future. A sharp contrast to the woman reflected in the glass. Her eyes tried tired from battling nightmares and skin wrinkled from age. How, how would her younger self feel seeing her now? Probably ashamed and disgusted. She knows herself well enough to see that. Back in these days, everything was s sorted into a neat little boxes, and anything that stood outside of it was a menace to society. Those idea matched that of her friends perfectly. So much so that her mother used to tease the six of them about being a hive mind. She's also one that took this photo catching Ruth and her friends mid laughter with their matching cotton dress dresses of alternating uh, teals and pinks. Many years has it how many years has it since then? She lost count. It's hard to keep track of months, days, and years when they all blend together in one montiguous heap. Her ex-husband was the reason she was able to keep track at time, and now he's gone, taking all the uh, all of her precious guns with her with him. Did he know the real reason why she slept with a knife under her pillow and a? There was a revolver in her nightstand? Did he take them out of spite? Or is he really that thick-headed? She'll never know. Ruth places the photo back into her drawer for safekeeping and places the frame face down before slamming the drawer shut. She doesn't want anyone to lay eyes on her. One treasure. The rest of the f photographs she had got lost after she moved from state to state. Now it's all she has left of. There's a crash and Ruth screams before slapping her hand over her mouth. What was that? Her gaze skate over the source of the crash as she watch, watches as a large hand grip the ledge of her, the window. Oh no. No, 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 no. Did they find her? The same person that got Alice, Grady, and Chelsea? Yet, who else could it be? There's no one else who would do this. No one else she feared her all this time. But how did they find her? She's always been careful, never leaving any trace, leaving too many traces of herself online and moving when she needed to. How are they here? Then it clicks. You. You must have brought them here. You stupid little... There's a crunch of boots and soft puff of breath as someone crawls in with a head full of dark blue hair. Ruth watches with horror as the figure drops to the floor with practiced ease and rises from the ground like a Lucifer himself rising from hell. Wow. Intruder <laughs> wipes the sweat off his forehead, giving a soft little puff a breath from the effort of breaking in. <laughs> it's so nonchalant. Like he used to, like he's used to getting away with this sort of thing without facing any repercussions. The brutes, 
This roots her to the ground, her body frozen in place. Oh man, I wonder what he's gonna do to her. Move. Move. Her breathing comes in unsteady pants, but she can't bring herself to even a wiggle of pinky finger. She's so scared. Why is she so weak? She's always been so weak. Back then with her and now and with this man who posed a threat to her life. And oh god, help her. The man takes his time facing Ruth and peels off her blue wig and cap and tossing them both to the ground with relish. He groans as he raises his head and massages his scalp underneath the tangled mess of purple hair. His cross earrings glint in the light, capturing Ruth's full attention. Wait a moment. Why does he have that? She knows that earring, but she hasn't seen it since the unfortunate news about Clarissa came out, and back then it wasn't an earring. In fact, it was a pendant that belonged on a necklace, a gift she gave Clarissa for her birthday so many odd years ago. So where did he get it? Ah, uh, now that's much better. Her man groans and Ruth stiffens at the melodonic nature of his voice. It's almost eerie how similar he sounds, just a more masculine, masculine vi version of her. And those eyes. Ruth's hands fly to her mouth as she tries covering her her shock. You're not who I'm looking for. His boots crunched over the broken glass as he covers the distance between them. She shrinks back. Please don't hurt me. The intruder slowly lifts his arm so she can see the hilt of a blade tucked at his side. He smirks at the way she shrinks back, rel relieving the effects he has on her. He's sick, twisted. Ruth back up against her nightstand and her fingertips drift towards the handle of the drawer as she works on inching it outwards. What do you want from me? Don't you see I have nothing to give? I beg to differ. But I'm not the begging sort. His eyes wander over where she she's inching the drawer open. What do you have in there? I I don't She yanks the drawer open and her finger brushes the metal before Adam yanks her hand away by the wrist. Ruth shrieks as he as he towers over her. Uh, uh, ah. Uh. You're not supposed to play with guns. They're dangerous, you know. He says, licking his free hands towards the revolver. You wouldn't accidentally want to hurt me, would you? Ruth's bottom lip trembles. She can't bring herself to answer. The intruder rolls his hands bef rolls his eyes before he lands on the picture hidden in her nightstand. Oh, what's this? He tries to grab her treasure, and Ruth's brain regains connect connectivity, grabbing his arm before he can. Don't touch that! There's women in her voice, surprising both her and the intruder. The man actually cracks an annoyed smile. Ah, uh, I see the family resembles now. Turns out you got a bit of piss and vinegar in you as well. And honestly, it's really freaking annoying. He rips Ruth's hand off his arm, sending her trembling onto her bed. Before she can make another attempt, stop him. The man picks up 
the group photo with a defiant smirk. Rufy knows when he spots her because his entire body goes ridge, his eyes snapping wide open like blinds on a window. His mouth, but he mouths a single word. And just like that, Rufy's suspicions are confirmed. She never knew what happened to him. She didn't even recognize him at first because he'd grown so much and changed everything about himself. But now, I'm sure you don't remember me, Adam, but I... Adam's face goes stone cold and the heat in the room drops 20 degrees, chilling Ruth to the bone. Uh-oh. Oh boy, <laughs> he grips the frame so hard that the wood cracks from the pressure. Well, isn't this interesting? He looks down at her, and the hatred in his eyes is absolute. If he didn't want to kill her before, she's almost certain he does now. There's no reason he wouldn't at this point. They both know what she's done. The grief she caused. That all are of them caused. And now her karma has returned tenfold. She's going to die. And she knows it. Who scrambles backwards onto the bed before she hits the wall. He withdrawn his knife. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Adam cocks his head, his grip on the hilt, white knuckle. No, you aren't. Oh, bro, no. Riff screams as the steel descends on her, causing. A few lazy crows rest, resting on her back lawn to go sh shooting up towards the graying skies. Oh. Monsoon season sure picks up, takes one hell of a time to pop off. Oriental rain starts pouring down and soaking through your t-shirt, pants, and the worst offender of all, your socks, as you make your way into the bar. Your stomach growls at a fresh warm scent of food, and you crave both something to eat and fresh change of colors, uh, sorry, change of clothes, but that will have to wait until you get back to your aunt's trailer. Not to mention cleaning a massive stack of dishes if you want any utensils. You're pretty sure something in the sink winked at you. Well, in that sink winked at you. <laughs> Maybe you can sneak a purchase for some cheap rubber gloves from the Dollar Street on your way back. A woman bustles past you and stomps on your foot as you try to make your way towards a waitress. Fudge, that smarts. Did she just stabbed your big toe with her four-inch pump on purpose? By the way, she's smirking while texting on her phone. Sure says as much. What the heck was that for? Don't cut in line. You scowl, resisting the urge to pull an atom by chucking her phone in, into the fish tank sitting nearby. But the fish didn't do anything wrong. You instead turn away and head towards the front, tossing a brief explanation over your shoulder. Not that you owe her one. I'm just here to get my wallet. I'm not waiting for a table. She grabs your arms, pulling you back, snarling. Hey, 
I said, wait your turn. The action reminds you of him. Something inside of you snaps under the weight of it. Her next words die on her lips as you turn to face the woman in a red field with so much audacity. Her hand drops limply at her side. When you move towards her, she holds her hands up and you realize it's not your face she's afraid of. She's staring at your side with a knife, kitchen knife dress. Oh, that makes more sense. <coughs> well, it works well enough for you as long as she doesn't start complaining to staff. You don't really need to add trouble of getting pulled into a police station. You've got enough to worry about. I'm not here to cause trouble. I just forgot something, so... Can you leave me well enough alone? The woman nods, swallowing hard as she takes a step back. A few people behind her grow curious and peers over her shoulder. Great. Gotta love the scene she's causing, giving you yet another reason to hurry to get the hell out of here. When you make it past the crowd, you manage to catch one of the waitresses' attention as she bustles from the table the table by tapping on her shoulder. Excuse me, but has anyone here found a wallet? The waitress jabs her thumb towards the bar, chewing loudly in her gum. Thomas mentioned something about finding one earlier. Oh, uh, thanks. She waves you off as she continues onto her next table while you head towards the man dipping from head to toe in a tattooed ink. As you approach, you overthink, you overhear him making jokes with the mid-middle-aged portion who pats at his pot belly. Jesse's dad, I mean Jesse's says dad's bods are all the rage these days. Tattoo man Thomas chuckles as he pours a patron a drink and slides it over with the well-practiced name. They're not wrong, you know. I'm sure you'll find someone who appreciates you for you and, and just not yourself. Solid and deleted winder. That's coming from personal experience. heard about it from friends, actually. I'm not really into the dating or hooking hookup scene, so all of my horror stories come from them. The patron nods in understanding. Here's to that. Winder is dog shiz. Thomas chuckles again and stops once once you step up to the bar, he gives you a once over. His brow wrinkles, lips pursing. Have I seen you before? Uh, maybe from earlier I accidentally. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, maybe from earlier I accidentally left my wallet behind and heard you found one. Thomas snaps his fingers, finally pla placing you. Right. I tried chasing after you, but you left in such a rush. I didn't manage to return it in time. The patron takes one large swig of his drink before he stands up from the bar and nods towards Thomas. He pushes a crisp $20 bill his way. I guess that's my cue. Thomas holds a finger up. You've had a few. Is Jesse on their way to pick you up? The patron rolls his eyes and waves Thomas off. Yeah, they're already parked outside. Thomas nods his approval. And Patron gives both you and Leroy a, fing a two-finger salute before making his exit. Thomas pats the now empty space in front of him. Feel free to sit. Can I get you anything? No, that's okay. I just came for my wallet. Don't you want to chat with old Roy? I'm a bit offended. He smiles. Says he's not the least bit offended. You like him almost immediately, but you're also still in a hurry to get in and out in case Adam somehow figures out you're here. 
I'm in a bit of a rush, but maybe next time. Think you promise? He says as it actually sticks out the finger. Pinky. He laugh and God, it's been long since you've laughed at as you hook your pinky with his. It's a deal. Thomas grins. Oh boy, sincerity. Before drawing away and wiping down the other patron's glass. Glad to hear it. So, out of curiosity, did you and your bow, your boo make up? Your what now? My boo? You know, your man, your partner, your lover? Your nod shifts from a soft, vibrant yellow glowing and happy to an uncertain purple tinged with fear. What he says makes no sense. I don't... He came in here earlier looking for you. Said you two got into a fight and you ran off. And he was really worried, you know? Afraid you got hurt or something. There's no doubt in my mind that man loves you. You scrunch your eyes closed as if it will stop his words. There's only one man searching for you, and he wants you dead. Adam. But how did he come in here without people noticing? He couldn't have unless... Oh, that little shiz. He disguised himself, didn't he? Talk about being a chameleon, changing shapes and personalities to suit his environment. You probably already know that, though. You give a non-comical smile. Something like that. Thomas accepts the answer as he reaches into his back pocket. He frowns. Strange. We got busy earlier, so I just kept your wallet on hand. Did I drop it by accident? He lost it? No, wait. If Adam was here, he probably managed to get his grubby little hands on your property somehow. Which is bad. Because knowing him, he's going to figure out a way to locate where you're staying. You don't know how, but your sixth sense is tingling. I'm so sorry, I swear. I. The phone behind him rings. He holds up a finger, mouthing another apology before he answers. Hello, Thomas from Briar's Bar Grill speaking. How may I help you? There's a pause as Thomas rubs the back of his neck as he turns toward you. He mouths. Your boyfriend's on the phone. He knows you're here. Is he calling from outside, waiting for you to come out, to come out wherever you are? He's the type to turn this entire charade of his into a game. Thomas covers the receiver. You should really talk to him. Yeah, because... Talking will solve the bad blood going on between you and Adam. He wants to impale you on, a, on the tail end of his knife. But Thomas doesn't know that. Fine. Let me talk to him. He motioned for the phone, and Thomas hands it over with a smile. Oh, this poor, sweet, naive man. Adam tricked him too, just like everyone else. Your words are cutting as... You answer, wanting to get the first word in edgewise before you hear his stupid voice. Hello, honey. You hear sniffling and the soft, quiet sobs of a woman. It's not what you were expecting. Hello? You can hear Adam speaking in the background to someone. When the crying woman speaks, horror floods you like a broken dam. That's... Help! me. You grip the receiver so tight it almost you almost breaks it. Thomas mouths Is everything okay? You wave him off trying to appear more calm than you feel. Did he get Ruth? How did he find her? How did he? Adam comes onto the line unnervingly chipper. Man, this guy.
hear that? She's begging for your help. Won't you come and help her? Let her go. There's more shuffling, and your poor aunt sobs. It gets louder, and you can hear her begging for Adam to put his knife away. You grind your teeth so hard, you almost break one. How dare he? How dare he go for your family? When you get your hands on him, you'll go straight for the throat. You know, I didn't think looking for you would lead me to this situation. But, as it turns out, maybe fate does in fact exist. Who would have thought? I guess I'll have to reason my belief. This is between you and me. Oh, my bad. That's not Adam. <laughs> this is between you and me, you freaking butt. Leave other people out of this. Oof. Touchy, touchy. You're getting all worked up. And here I am being nice enough to put your dear aunt on the phone. I'd say... I'm being quite generous, given the circumstances. What circumstances? Are you talking about stalking me to the end of the earth? Because if I didn't know any better, I'd say... You're a bit obsessed with me. Careful, Adam, or I'll start thinking you've got an unrequired crush. The words came off scratching sharp as a kitchen knife hidden in <laughs> your pants as Adam goes silent on the other end. There's a sharp cry, and Adam responds with venom. Ever suggest something like that again? And I'll start chopping off parts of her body. You bite your lip to keep from saying anything else. It's one thing if it's between you and him, but... Another when your aunt involved. She may not be your favorite person, but you still don't want to see her hurt. What do you want from me, Adam? You know what I want. You hate him. God, you hate him. You wish a stray bolt thunder would blast him out of this existence, and he's sucky. He's <laughs> sucking this, sorry, but into a world of pain and suffering. Fine. Just leave Ruth out of this. Aw, oh, cutting so brave. It's kind of cute the way you're trying to puff yourself up to be bigger when, in reality, you're just a scared little kitten. Are you going to scratch me with those little claws of yours? He's baiting you. Anything you say will give him room to hurt Ruth. And knowing him, he'll blame it on your behavior rather than his own sadistic tendencies. You keep your mouth shut. What? Cat got your tongue? And you still don't answer. He turns mocking. Hello? Hello? Are you still there? If you don't answer within the next minute, I'll drill a hole in your beloved aunt's head. I don't get you. What was that? You're kind of quiet. I said, I don't get you. Your hand slams against the countertop and Thomas jumps from where he's standing, halting the conversation between him and the new patron. Lover quarrels, you explain to the patron and Thomas, who stares at you with concern. Back to Adam, you lower your voice a few octaves. I didn't even go to the police, and I've left 
you well enough no well enough alone. Why can't you return the damn favor? Because you're a stain on this world. Just like this aunt of yours. <clears throat> what do you even know about me? I've done nothing to you. I know enough. Now I suggest you refrain yourself from throwing another tantrum, or I'll make do on my promises. You do as I say, and I'll let your aunt live. You mean, you mean live long enough for her to watch as you slip my throat? Adam chuckles darkly. Either way, she gets to live another minute. And if you don't comply, I'll kill her here and now. Not to mention I've got eyes on that bar. They'll track you wherever you go. Now you'll be good and come back to me, won't you? Close your eyes trying not to have a mental breakdown. You're trapped like a rat in a cage. And if you even try telling Thomas to call for help, he's going to kill Aunt Ruth the second you open your mouth. There's only one available option. You have to face him again. Your literal worst nightmare. Fine. Where do you want to meet? Do I really need to spell it out for you? The trailer? Adam gives a slow clap, sarcasm dripping in his tone. Congratulations. You put two and two together. Now hurry up, or she'll play the consequences. Your aunt screams and then the line goes dead, with you standing in place trying to keep from hurling the tang of bile in the back of your throat, both strong and acidic. Acidic. Your thoughts spiral out of control in a vicious tornado, tearing through common sense and destroying your sanity by the minute. Adams resorted to using your own family as a bargaining chip in order to get what he wants. He got Aunt Ruth. He got Aunt Ruth. And it's all your fault. It doesn't matter how you feel about her. This is your fight, and now she's drugged into the middle of it, of the sick and twisted game Adam is playing. You couldn't forgive yourself if she died because of you. You have to save her. You have to. A hand touches your shoulder, and you jump like you were shocked with a live wire. You whipped around and find Thomas staring at you with growing concern. Everything... Okay, you seem agitated. Yeah, I just... gotta head home. We've got some stuff to sort out. You know, a couple stuff and all that. You can hear the tremor in... in your voice, but Thomas doesn't seem to notice. He just nods sagely. I wish you the best of luck. Fights with loved ones around here. Loved ones are hard, but they turned out okay, no matter the end result. He gives your shoulder a reassuring squeeze, as if to emphasize his point. Yeah, thanks for the help and advice. You hope he's right. Because there's nothing... Because there are things that are going to get dicey in the next half hour, and... You're already, you already didn't know if you're going to make it out of this alive. Outside, you find the storm amplifies tenfold. The breeze picks up and flies through the air. Trees bend and almost breaks at the force of the winds. The weather matches how you're feeling right now. And you sprint across the parking lot your car. To your left, you can see headlights, a small refer truck blasting your car with windshear wipers wiping back and forth. When you get into the driver's seat and head straight 
for the highway, it pulls out after you and begins its pursuit. You try waving in and out of pursuit, anything to shake them off, but no matter how hard you try, they remain two tail lengths behind. It's not until the midway point that they start tailgating you. You assume this is what Adam meant when he said he had his eyes on the bar. Whoever's in the car is his informant. The demand stalker. The damn stalker. <laughs> Did they call Adam as soon as you showed up? You're betting they did. How else would Adam know to call there? He knew what you were going to do before you did it. He's playing a game of chess, and now he's getting closer to winning this nasty-ass game of his thanks to his helper. Your eye is going back to the refer, refer truck. And as soon as you stop, you peer into your rearview mirror to see if you sneak a peek at the driver. You catch a flash of a f a familiar white hair. As if sensing your eyes on him, Adam's informant waves. Saffron. These two bastards. You're half tipped to go into reverse and ram your bumper into the grill of his truck. But your hand hovers over the gear stick. Finger twitched at the idea. No, you can't. You wrench your hand away to force it back into the steering wheel. If anything goes down, he'll tell Adam. And then your aunt's blood will be on your hands. You need to stay complaint, com complaint because now there's because now there's more than one life at stake here. Yours and hers. You need to play things carefully. It's best. It's your best shot to, at making it out of this alive without bringing any more harm to your family. You take a deep shudder breath. Stay calm, stay collected. And try to stay safe. The rest of the drive feels long and torturous as you force down your he hectic thoughts. Thunder booms in the skies while wind tugs at your car and your heart thuds while over the speed limit. When you finally reach the trailer park, everyone's lights are off, either asleep or out drinking. You pull in front of your aunt's mobile home and step out of the Refere truck stops behind you. They keep their lights on, illuminating your way as you walk up the steps. You hesitate before knocking. There's a pause. Your breath almost seems as loud as the rain. What awaits you behind this door? What have you come to find? When there's no response for a minute, you almost considered knocking again. Then the lock starts clicking. Click. He's in there. Click. Where will you run? Click. He's going to kill you this time. Click. Death is here. Your time is up. You test the doorknob. As soon as you hear the last click. Inside the lights are off. Glass crunches under the sole of your shoes with each step. You feel like you're suffocating. He's here. He's here in the same room. Waiting. Watching. You can feel his presence in the dark. Lurking like a monster. Sizing up its prey. Why isn't he saying or doing anything? Usually he can't shut up because he loves hearing himself talk so much. At least from how he pretends, uh, how he presents himself on the way on that highway so long ago. You swallow a lump in your throat and dare to speak. I've done what you've asked. I'm here. I'm the one you want. Now let my aunt go. You wait. 
nothing but silence. He tried peering through the darkness, searching for his silhouette, but everything blends together in odd shapes. He reached out what you think could be him, but your hand lands on a messy dishes from earlier. Where the heck is he? Your hand goes to your hips, waiting for him to tackle you to the ground like he did last time. Adam? You take a step back, wondering how he managed to conceal himself in such a small space. Is he gonna spring springboard out from under the table like a toy jack in the box? You wouldn't put it past him. You get ready to check under the table just in case and turns towards it. Something brushes your ankle and you yelp, taking a few steps back. Lighting Lightning flashes, allowing a light to appear through the broken window. You realize that's where the glass came from. And as for what your what's near your ankles, you screamed at the time thunder booms and the sky lightning illuminates the room once more. Your aunt lays motionless to the ground with her body covered in blood and soaked through the brown carpet. Oh, Dang, God. Jeez. And above her, above her stands Adam. He holds out, he holds onto one of her arms while the other goes to scrub the streak of blood off his face. He finally speaks. His words drip with poison, wrapped in velvet. Well, well, well. Steps over Ruth's body and drops her hand. In place, it, his pace slows and dangerous like a hunter on the, on the prowl. You take a step back and hit something in the process and tumble onto the floor. You stare up at Adam's wide frame in horror as he traces a hand along the curved edge of his knife. He then bends down to your level and tips your chin. Uh, sorry. He bends down to your level and tips your chin up with the point of his blade. His forever cruel smile remains as he continues. It looks like it looks like I finally found you. My elusive little pet. What? What? <laughs> what? I mean, what else was I? I mean, the other option was I didn't bite her. But I didn't go through with that. Interesting. I mean, I wonder if it still led up to the same thing. Huh. I mean, I'm, I am curious to see what would happen, but... So many questions. Well, I guess I will make an extra episode of this to see what happens if I didn't bite her. Because apparently that was like the other option. But I mean, it still looked like it led me to everything was okay. So I guess I'll try that definitely next time. Definitely the next episode. So uh, apparently that was. It seems to be the good ending. Uh, wow, that was really a shocker there. I'm like, wait, what? But, uh, huh. Well, that was really, that was something. That was something.
Well, if, if you guys enjoyed this, please remember to still hit that like button and please be sure to subscribe so that way you guys don't miss out any content that comes out here on my channel. And uh, that was the game so far of you and him. I don't want to call this really a last episode, but um, I... <laughs> I mean, if I do make another episode of this, it will probably be very, 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 might be a very sh short video, maybe, but we'll see. Um, if not, then uh, I might decide to add on to this at the end, like extra. So, uh, yeah, but uh, until then, I will catch you guys in uh, any different episode if you guys really enjoyed this just you know please let me know and uh if you want me to if there's another one of these types so i love these kind of things these stories like that they're kind of interesting um but yeah okay so catch you guys next time until then bye guys <laughs> either this is going to be still part of the video or uh it, it, you know if because I, I am recording this now or this is going to be uh, probably going to be added onto this video as the final episode of this. So until then, let's let me go back because before I bit. So let us go limp because last time I, I did go limp on the other episode, but what happened is she was like, why you fall on the floor like that kind of thing. All right. So I go Aunt Ruth and then she goes, what the hell is that for? <laughs> so I'm gonna try the other option here and see what happens. Yep, it's your aunt, all right. I I thought you were someone else. What else would I be? No one else lived here. You stupid brat. She turns, and you hear the dead bolt lock into place followed by the rapid succession of four or more lo lo I mean, four more clicks coming soon after and when she when did she get all those extra locks there was only one the last time you checked uh on ruth shh bit flies from her lips as she shushes you and your mouth clamps shut with the responding snap of your teeth. You watch as your aunt presses her ear against the door, quieting her breathing like she's afraid of someone will overhear her. Or overhear. There's only two poss possible reasons for this. Either the problematic neighbors are drawing <laughs> stuff on her flamingos again, or something really sketchy is going on. No pun intended. When Ruth finally pulls away from the door, she breathes a dramatic sigh of relief, full on pressing a hand to her chest and thinking, God, if you're not standing there witnessing the whole dapsicle before you can comment on her erratic behavior, your aunt turns to you with her arm crossing over her chest, clunking her tongue. Now tell me, why are you here? When you don't answer fast enough for her liking, she sneers. What? Did your Uncle Dan you for taking something else from me? Sorry to disappoint the two of you, but I have nothing left to give. I'm not here because of him. I'm here because I'm li my living situation has gotten a bit complicated and I need a place to stay while I sort things out. Your aunt's eyes narrowed, or at least you imagine they do, c considering you can't see due to the distinct lack of lighting. But you know your aunt's changed in expressions due to the disturbance in the air, a slight shift in the winds. You've trained long and hard and ready situations like this, guided by your giddy ancestors. Okay, star... Star Wars jokes aside, you just know her by now. Ah, so you're only visiting because you want something from me. Why am I not surprised? 
the comment irks you. Who were you delivering those guns for again? Certainly not yourself. The road trip from from hell is the entire reason you're in this mess with Adam in the first place. If you never crossed paths, and it's not like you want to room with her, but you got nowhere else to go. Not when you discovered your worst fear in a couple of hours earlier. Okay. After repairing your shoulders and taking a quick power nap in front of the seat of the chair of the car, you find yourself sandwiched between booths, Briar's Bar, and Grill, nursing a glass of water with an empty plate in front of you. You were drawn in by the warm smells of advertisement and cheap food. Searching your car for pocket change, you manage to scourge and get something decent and moderately filling. The way you, your jaw unhinged when you dug into the meal kind of scared the waiter off. He wasn't asked to refill your glass or any everything any time uh, you glances over to him. He looks a little pale, opting to con converse with other patrons instead. Not that you mind, as long as you allow and loiter while you come up with a plan, you don't mind the lack of service. Besides, after running into Adam and Saffron's conversing with normal people proves difficult. He struggled a bit before, which is why your inner circle of friends remain few and far between. And now? Now everyone is potential threat, and in order to survive, you need to approach things carefully. This includes interacting with strangers. What you need is a friend and a family, a member you can trust. Someone who can help you while you try to decide if you're going to keep your apartment or skip town. A temporary place of refuge. You make a metal list of potential prospects, crossing out those who live out of state and those you've lost contact with Eliminating almost everyone in the process. All except for one. Aunt Ruth comes into mind. Okay, so. I thought I was going to just keep reading this. But I think this is also a repeat. So let me kind of go on ahead a little bit. Okay? Because she was my best bet. And if I'm wrong... Yeah, so now we're back to the TV. Yeah. So let's... Let me skip all this. And he plays the pity card. With the friends. Oh, uh, looks like he's still... Hurting my aunt. It don't matter. It's the same option. Because <laughs> I see that ending popping up. Oh. Oh, man. Well. <laughs> I didn't want to skip it at first. But then I, I, saw, I saw the logo about the bad ending right there. And then I was going to keep reading the whole thing. But I realized it's just going to repeat the whole thing again. So, apparently, it looks like Adam gets the last laugh in this. But, I, I have to admit, the story was pretty interesting, and it was very decent. It wasn't too bad I, for a, a Guy Gondre story. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, if I, I know I've added this, so I just want to say thank you guys seriously so much for supporting and watching this gameplay. Um, I really still enjoyed it and um you know for doing this for halloween it was really really kind of interesting uh but you never know what other games i may sometimes randomly play and or do and uh it usually i just it just comes and it just pops up and you never know 
just always had to keep a watch out on stuff like that. But uh, if you guys truly did enjoy this, like I said, please, please remember to hit that like button. Please be sure to hit subscribe. And I'll catch you guys definitely in another episode or in a different whole thing or some other game that I play. But uh, yeah, until then, uh, let me not make this awkward and just say, see you guys. Stay safe. And yes, I'm sorry about my throat. It's still kind of off, but hey, I do my best for you guys. Much love to you guys. Until then, bye.